I know, you're here because you learned how to automate all your formulas with array formula, but now they go on forever and there's all these errors below it, and how do you just make it stop at the end of your data? Well, there's a lot of ways to do it, but here is the main way if you have nice clean data. Let's check it out. All right, so we're starting here with our data from our automate your formulas array formula function video. If you're not sure what array formulas are or want to learn how to automate your functions, go check that video out and that'll catch you up to where we are here. So with these formulas, we learned how to make it so uh, the formula, we put it in once and it'll generate it for every single row in the sheet that we have. And we determined that it's nice to do it for the whole sheet and not just constraining it to your specific data because if you do that and you get a new row, it's not gonna continue down. So is there a dynamic way to make it so it cuts off at the end of your data and every time you get a new row, it'll still continue with that formula? And the answer is yes. And the function to do here is array constraint. So what we do is we again wrap this whole thing in the function array constraint. So we're gonna type it out. It's actually array underscore constraint. And then when we get to the end, we see our uh, parameters that we're allowed to put in here. The first one is the input range, which is really just your formula. Start with the formula that you want, build out to that array formula, and then put the constraint around that. So when it says input range, it's really just what's the formula that you're trying to accomplish in that single row. Level that up to the array formula, and then here we are now. So let's put a comma and we'll say the number of rows. So this is where it's asking how many rows do you want to constrain it to? So I can hard code in my constraint. I can say two and then number of columns one and close my parentheses. And what it would do is it would just constrain it to two rows. But this formula gives us the opportunity to nest another formula in about how many rows we have. So the easiest way to do this, if you have clean data, like something without spaces or at least one column that has uh, some information for every row of information that you wanna calculate on, is to use the count a function. So if we do count a, it's gonna count the number of values in that data set, not just count the range you put in. Uh, and then we can do the whole range of A to A, we'll say. And we're gonna use that because that's a timestamp from our form. We know it's consistent. We know every time a form is submitted that there has to be a timestamp there. So this is now counting how many rows in all of A, starting at two, that I have data in. We're gonna keep the column as one, and then we're gonna hit enter, and you're gonna see that it stops at the last row. Now to prove that this works when you add another one, let's go back to our form. We'll add a response. And when we go back to our formula, we see we now have this new row and the formula calculated as it should onto the next row. All we have to do is do this for all of the columns where we have a formula with the array formula attached to it. So this one, we would do the same thing. We can constrain it, array constrain. We'll count the rows the same way that we did before because we know we have nice consistent data. So count A, we'll count our first column. Uh, and then how many columns are we doing this for? We're doing it for one. So we just wanna constrain it to that one column. We'll hit enter and there we are. So as we said in the array formula video, this is great because your formula will never get moved around at some random place, uh, you know, in cell. E252 because somebody copied, paste, or moved something around. It'll always calculate it straight down for every row in here. And the constraint will make sure it just always ends at the bottom of your data. But if you have a weird data setup and maybe you have gaps in it, you only want it to calculate across um, every fourth row or something like that, there are other ways to kind of manipulate the array formula and the constraint formula to help you with this. But this is the most basic way to do it. So if you wanna hear more about all the advanced ways we can use array formula and array constraint, like, comment, subscribe, do all the things, and we'll see you next time.